Hey y'all, what's going on? This is Jesse Bowes from the 19th hole. We got the pro playthrough here. We're going to play holes 1 through 9. We're going to talk about the ways to play the hole, club selection, ball selection, elevation changes, good stuff like that. Hopefully through this video you can get a handle on how to play the course. Uh, hopefully what you see here will help you kind of develop a game plan to move forward with and you can dial in the shots as well throughout the week hopefully put yourself in a good position uh, for a run at that top three on the weekend so go ahead and get started here for hole number one all right we got hole number one here par five we start this one off with a great chance at albatross for the drive I'm gonna be using my extra mile for the second shot I would recommend going with a sniper I'm gonna be playing both shots at plus ten percent and you could use either a katana ball or you can use uh, a power three ball for this uh, for this hole as well we're gonna go with the katana ball for this video but definitely power three ball wouldn't be a bad choice either so for this shot here we're gonna go with four top two left spin We're going to aim our shot. 5.4 is going to be 2.9 rings. We want to aim this shot right down the middle of the fairway. We're going to adjust and then we're going to push back up. So 2.9 is going to be our adjustment for this 10% max. So we'll push back up to max distance and then we just hit our shot here great to the right hopefully we'll still be okay we did use that left spin hopefully it will save us and we're gonna roll back out so the left spin did save us in the end and we should have still a, a second shot towards the hole all right so let's see what we have for our second shot with our sniper plenty of distance here so we're gonna play this one right at mid sniper and play this one right at the hole right about three backspin one right spin we'll play it just a little bit offset to the right edge and we're gonna play this one at uh, one to one we're at mid distance so we'll play this one right under six rings adjustment there's five and then there's just under six We hit that one perfect, so let's see how this one comes in. It should be close. And booyah! There was our albatross right there. So just as I said, played that one at mid. One to one adjustment is plus 10% for that shot. Uh, we played that one a little bit to the right edge of the hole. Just for a little bit push from that uh, that wind. You know, you don't need too much of an offset for this wind because it is fairly a uh, straight tailwind, but just the slightest little uh, push to that right edge of the hole. So that hole number one, and we'll be back for hole number two. We got hole number two here, par four. Be playing this to the left side. I like the accuracy club for this drive, so I go with a quarterback. You could also use a rock if you have a rock leveled up for your ball choice. Katana ball, or I say kingmaker ball. Um, you know, lower level sniper, you may want to go with the Kingmaker ball to give yourself a little bit extra power. Uh, if you have a higher level sniper, you could probably get away with the Katana ball. But uh, definitely, you know, if you want to go Kingmaker, no matter what, definitely nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to be using a Katana ball here uh, for my attempt at the shot. My opponent's going with the extra mile eight. Uh, definitely another choice of club that is definitely, you know, usable on this hole. But when you have a shot that you can take with 100% accuracy club like the Rock or the Quarterback, I really don't see any reason to be using a driver like the Extra Mile in this shot. So, plus 10% on the drive is what we're going to play. Uh, 7.5 wind, and I'm going to play max right spin and we're gonna go one and a half bars of topspin for this shot 
we just want to aim this shot right up the middle and then we're going to uh, now we're going to aim it we're going to aim it just a little bit to the right side of the middle now we're going to adjust our ring 7.9 there's 5 6 7.9 and we're not going to use any, we're going to use a slight right curl here for this shot. Just like the slightest of right curl. And it comes up there, rolls like nice, very nicely up the fairway. As you see, we went with 1.5 top for one reason. Two top would have been really pushing the edge of that, that fairway. So definitely glad we decided to go with 1.5 top spin and not the regular two. With uh, a side wind, you know, on that hole. Two top spins okay. Uh, with a headwind, maybe a little bit more. But with the tailwind that we have on that hole, you get such an extended ball guide off that tee box that you don't need that extra top spin. So 1.5 definitely is the correct spin to play there for that shot. For this next shot, we're playing with the sniper. We will be playing a plus 10% here on this shot as well. 6.4 is going to be our adjustment here. And we're going to play at max. We're going to play 2, 3, now 2.5 here, and 4 backs, 4 right spin. We're going to play this one just coming in just about half a square right of the hole, I would say. And then we're going to play a 7 ring adjustment for this, which is 10% max. We hit this one perfect. Let's see how this one comes in. Looks pretty good. And Traino, baby. Get the eagle. So we start out Alba and eagle on hold number one and number two. Definitely couldn't ask for a better start than that right there. So, we'll see you all on three. Billy Go Bluff is next. All right, so we got hole three here, par three, the infamous Billy Goat Bluff. We're going to be going at this one with a sniper. I'm going with the Kingmaker. We're going a plus 50% for the elevation change. And I'm, I'm definitely going to be trying to jump this shot off this first ferretway pad right about in here it looks like is what we're gonna play so we're gonna be playing max left for backspin here or free backspin looks like a pretty good pass towards the hole right there um, 6.3 is 9.5 and I'm going to play just like a tiny bit of curl here. Hit perfect. Let's see what this one does. I mean, might as well try, right? Oh, uh, we got that bounce left. Bounce to the left right there. So, it's either like you got to go with the curl or you use the full side spin. I don't think you can use both. Um, and it may be like go down to like two and a half bars of backspin right there for that shot because it does look like you know that that shot lacked a little bit of power going into the uh, the green so you know instead of three backspin I'm thinking maybe two and a half backspin and and cut out the curl just stick with the full left spin so it'd be like two and a half two and three quarters of a bar of backspin max left spin and um, you know max uh, adjustment uh, with plus 50 percent this is definitely a hole that is in the works to be dialed in and if we ever if we get this thing dialed in it's absolutely a beaut it's a plus one stroke on everybody in the field which could end up being huge um, come the end of this tournament so we'll keep working on it and hopefully we can get something figured out but still we're putting for an easy birdie you can't really complain about that Alright, we got hole number four here, par four. 
we play playing this one to the right side with the quarterback. You can also play this to the left side and play a curl shot. It sets you up with a really nice second shot with a straight headwind, uh, tailwind to the hole. But we're going to be playing our shot to the left here. Max left spin, four top spin. We're aiming right over here in between these rocks. Pretty much, as you all can see. Right in between those rocks and that rough line. We are not going to go with the uh, full overpower here. We're going to come up just a little bit on the overpower. And we are going to full hook it though. And this should put us in a, a really good spot. Rolling up to the fairway and up to the edge of the green right there. And that's going to give us a really nice chip in for the uh, for the eagle. The reason we didn't go full overpower on this shot, this whole, this shot was because with the quarterback 9 and the quarterback 10, they have the same power distance. Um, so you don't really need the full power. If you're taking the shot with a level 7 or a level 8 quarterback, then you would use complete full overpower on that shot. So just keep that in mind um, when you are trying to figure out how to play that shot. If you got a level 7 or 8, you can do full power. Uh, if you have a level 9 or 10, you're just going to back off on that power just a little bit like I did on my shot. Leaves you a very nice little chip to the hole. My opponent's playing it to the left-hand side. He's going to have a very nice uh, uh, short iron as well to the hole with a nice tailwind. So pretty cool to be able to, to see his shot as well. But to me, it's it's no-brainer. I mean, it's it's right all day long with uh, you know with this type of a shot. We'll play this one uh, between the flag zip and the left edge, and uh, just want to hit this one perfect. Ooh, he great right. We might miss. Never mind, it's the Embringer. All right, so let's see my opponent's shot here. Definitely kind of happy he went to the right, uh, to the left hand side, so that we could see uh, his method of play as well. As you're going to see right away, he has a very nice straight tailwind at his back, and this just it may, it basically just comes down to can you hit the ball perfect? If you hit the ball perfect, this is like automatic here um, not really 100% sure why he is doing it that way but I'm sure maybe he knows something that I don't know he hit great right and he's going to miss it so I wouldn't have played it that way I probably would have played some backspin and put the guide up there next to the hole um, but hey whatever alright that was uh, hole number 4 all right, we got hole number five here, par three. We'll be playing this one with a sniper. We're we'll playing it with the king maker, and we will be going for the rough bump. Several ways to play this hole. I've seen several different spin methods work. We're going to be playing five left, 1.5 down uh, for our, uh, our attempt here. So five left, one and a half down. And we just got to find that spot on the fairway with the ball going right into the hole. Okay, and then we're going to do a one-to-one -one adjustment, so 5.6 rings, there's 5.6 rings-ish, perfect hit, this one should be pretty close. Not too bad of an attempt right there. Next time we will play that shot, we will um, put that ball guide on the back edge of the hole instead of right in the middle of the hole. I think that shot works a little bit better with uh, the ball guide lined up and more into the back edge of the hole. Um, as you go back and watch, I had mine lined up more towards the middle front edge. So quick little small little tweak we'll make right there on that hole. But I think that with that adjustment, you can drop it uh, pretty consistently. It's uh, just a one-to-one -one adjustment on that shot with that uh, five left, 1.5 down. Just going to find that spot on the rough where you have that nice ball guide going up the hill and then back down the hill into the hole. But like I said, make sure that the ball guide is lined up more towards the back side edge of the cup and not the front edge of the cup. Otherwise, you will end up uh, short and left of the hole. 
All right, we got hole number six, par five. Uh, we're going to be playing this one with the extra mile. We'll be playing it with the sniper. And you can play it with a katana ball or a power three ball. We'll be playing the, uh, the double bounce shot here on this hole. So full top spin. We're going to go with uh, like no, no side spin here on this shot. We are playing the shot to double bounce right here. We actually will go with some side spin to the left. And we want it to bounce right about there. So 5.6 is going to be 2, 4, it's just about, oh, not 2, not quite 3 rings. And then we're going to push up. Hit that one perfect. Let's see how this one comes in. Should be a good a good distance for the double bounce. And there we have it. Let's see what our yardage is at here. 377. So we're up we're up quite a bit of distance. So we won't need to use uh, quite, you know, probably about two bars of top spin is going to be my guess. Um, if you're around 374, 375, it's about two and a half. If you're in the low 70s, it's about three top spin. So I'm going to guess we're closer to about two bars of top spin uh, for this next upcoming shot. I'm going to play this one at plus 20% for this next shot. And we'll see here. I'm guessing two backspin, I mean two top spin, but we'll have to wait and see. Let's see what we got. Although we do have a ton of ball. So two and a half top spin is it looking like here. Coming in just before the hole is where we want. And we're going to play uh, 5.3 at plus 20%. It's going to be 6.3 rings. There's 6 and 0.3 rings. We hit that one perfect so we can truly see what our adjustment looked like here if we had it played correctly. It looks like it's going to come in a little bit too hot. Yep, a little bit too hot. Um, we should have trusted our gut and played that with more of the two top spin. I think that would have been a much more appropriate way to play that hole. But uh, I, I've trusted the ball guide more than I've trusted my own gut. So that's definitely uh, my fault. And I should have trusted my yardage markers. So higher 70s, you're going to look at two top spin, mid 70s, about 2.5, and then low 70s, about three top spin. You do want to try to judge that roll on the green, uh, and with that ball guy coming in just before uh, the front edge of that hole would definitely be the best way to play this hole. So we'll knock this one in, we'll move on, and we will get ready for our next hole. All right, so we got hole number seven here, par three. We're going for the rough bump. We'll we play this one at plus 15%. Uh, we'll play this one at uh, four top spin, max right spin. So max right spin, four top spin is the adjustment here. Looks like that one right into the hole. And I'm going to play our adjustment here. Max is six rings. So there's our six rings. Perfect hit. Let's see how this one comes rolling in. Is it something that we can think about using or not? Pretty close shot right there. Um, you know, the rough bump's probably going to be your best chance at the at the ace if I would have to, to predict on this hole. It's just a really tough hole to uh, to dial in. Um, you can't really land it up there in the area before the green because it's just so uh, so slopey there. You know, you just don't get a very consistent bounce. And, you know, the you get you know the same type of bounces if you try to uh, land it on that first left fairway as well. 
it's just not very consistent. The The rough is probably the most consistent landing spot that there is on this hole. So if we can figure out that, it looks like my shot came in a little bit too hot still. So what I need to do is I need to land that shot a little bit farther back and just trust that the ball guide will get there even if it shows just a little bit short. So that's what we'll, uh, we'll do moving forward. All right, we got hole number eight here, par four. It's probably one of the most unexciting holes in the tournament, in my opinion. And the way we're going to play it is uh, with extra mile. You could really use any of your higher level power drivers here and be okay. We're going to play it with the extra mile uh, eight. Uh, choose a katana ball. Definitely want to make sure you have the hornet in. Uh, instead of the thorn if you're going to go for the uh, rough bump. And I'm really not going to play this shot with any kind of overpower. I'm just going to let the the wind naturally do its thing. I go four bars of topspin. I would definitely strongly encourage you to not use lots of topspin and overpower at the same time. Because you can very easily roll through the fairway into the rough. So choose one or the other. The next shot we're going to be attempting here is a rough bump, and we end up using the Guardian from min distance here, as you can see. Um, it's a very difficult shot here, and it's one that's going to take some, some fine tuning, I think. So, with the, you know, you want to try to land up close to the edge, and we go with three, four, four topspin here. And, you know, I think, you know, five tops in would have been better. But as you can see, the ball guy is kind of misleading here. So we make our min adjustment and then we push up about half a ring. And I think, you know, if we had gone a full ring push up, we would have been okay. But with a half a ring, you'll just see we don't, we don't land far enough into that rough or close enough to the edge. And as a result, we don't get a very good, you know, bounce up to the green and no roll as a result. So, you know, next time... We'll go with, uh, you know, closer to a, a full ring of push-up, I think, for that shot. Uh, other than that, you know, I'm, I'm okay with the way the hole was played. You know, like I'd like to just reiterate to make sure you do bring your, your Hornet, though, if you do want to play that rough bump, because if you get too close up to that edge on the drive, then you will be in Hornet range, as you could all see. I was, I was pretty close to Hornet range there for myself. Okay, move on to the next hole. All right, we got hole number nine here, par five. We'll be playing this one with the quarterback to the right-hand side. We're going to be playing a, a power curl shot, trying to set, our, set ourselves up for a sniper shot to the hole. So what we got to do is we got to line ourselves up. Uh, we got to use full top spin uh, and left spin and use uh, you know pretty much our full curl with the level nine, level ten uh Quarterback, you won't need to use completely full overpower, but you will need to use a, you know, a good bit of the overpower still to make this shot. You do want your shot to land more along the left-hand side of that fairway. It gets a better bounce and also stays away from that right edge of the rough uh, on that next fairway. Uh, as you see, my opponent hits a shot and his shot rolls to the right side in that rough. So we are trying to uh, not do that right there. So let's see what we have here. We're going full left spin and four top spin. We want to lay our shot to be somewhere in there. So right about there. We're going to go full curl and then almost full power. We hit great to the left side. That's okay. You know, if you're going to hit great, you want to hit great to the left side. Because that's going to keep your ball left and more centered in the fairway. Don't want to hit great right on that drive or you end up like where my opponent's at. All right, so our second shot here, we got 4.9 wind. And let's see where we're at. You see, we're right there in min. So we're going to have to play our shot in min right here. And we're going to have to play left spin 
and backspin on this shot to, to really stop this ball. So we're going to play right about there. I like that. That looks pretty good. And we're going to play uh, 4.1, which is our min plus 5% on this shot. Great left. So we are going to come in left of the hole. But let's see what this backspin looks like. Okay. Not bad speed right there. Looks like we could have gone with a little bit more backspin and still been okay with that shot. Um, you know, if you do get far enough up the fairway on your drive, that's going to be this type of situation that you have. And you will have to play it to the right side like I played it. If you can uh, eat your drive where it's not quite as far, then you're going to have more of a straight on shot over the bunker towards the hole, which I think in the end is probably the better way to play this hole. You know, sometimes not going as far as you can on the drive is better. So, you know, future, I may take off a little bit of that top spin um, on that shot or just not play, you know, completely full overpower on that drive just to set myself up for better opportunity for my second shot. But we get the easy eagle, and that's something that you definitely can't complain about. So that's the... Uh, pro playthrough. Hopefully you all enjoyed this round and hopefully you all learned a thing or two. Y'all take care. God bless.